What is high blood pressure? High blood pressure or hypertension means high pressure in the arteries. Arteries are vessels that carry blood from the pumping heart to all the tissues and organs of the body. High blood pressure does not mean excessive emotional tension. Although emotional tension and stress can temporarily increase blood pressure. Normal blood pressure is below 120 over 80. Blood pressure between 120 over 80 and 139 over 89 is called prehypotension. And a blood pressure of 140 over 90 or above is considered high. The top number, the systolic blood pressure, corresponds to the pressure in the arteries as the heart contracts and pumps blood forward into the arteries. The bottom number, the diastolic pressure, represents the pressure in the arteries as the heart relaxes after the contraction. The diastolic pressure reflects the lowest pressure to which the arteries are exposed. An elevation of the systolic and diastolic blood pressure increases the risk of developing heart disease, kidney disease, hardening of arteries, eye damage, and stroke. These complications of hypertension are often referred to as end organ damage because damage to these organs is the end result of chronic high blood pressure. For that reason, the diagnosis of high blood pressure is important so efforts can be made to normalize blood pressure and prevent complications. It was previously thought that rises in diastolic blood pressure were a more important risk factor than systolic elevations. But it is now known that in people 50 years or older, Systolic hypotension represents a greater risk. How is the blood pressure measured? The blood pressure usually is measured with a small portable instrument called a blood pressure cuff, spigmo manometer. Spigmo is Greek word for pulse and a manometer measures pressure. The blood pressure cuff consists of an air pump, a pressure gauge and a rubber cuff. The instrument measures the blood pressure in units called millimeters of mercury. The cuff is placed around the upper arm and inflated with an air pump to a pressure that blocks the flow of blood the main artery that travels through the arm. The arm is then extended at the side of the body at the level of the heart and the pressure of the cuff on the arm and the artery is gradually released. As the pressure in the cuff decreases, a health practitioner listens with a stethoscope over the artery at the front of the elbow. The pressure at which the practitioner first hears a pulsation from the artery is the systolic pressure. As the cuff pressure decreases further, the pressure at which the pulsation finally stops is the diastolic pressure. Measurement of blood pressure can also be done with electronic machines that automatically inflate the cuff and recognize the changes in pulsations. How is high blood pressure defined? Blood pressure can be affected by several factors, so it is important to standardize the environment when blood pressure is measured. For at least one hour before blood pressure is taken, avoid eating, strenuous exercise, smoking, and caffeine intake. Other stresses may alter the blood pressure and need to be considered when blood pressure is measured. Even though most insurance companies consider high blood pressure to be 140 over 90 and higher for the general population, 
these levels may not be appropriate cutoffs for all individuals. Many experts in the field of hypertension view blood pressure levels as a range from lower levels to higher levels. Such a range implies there are no clear or precise cutoff value to separate normal blood pressure from high blood pressure. Individuals with so called prehypertension, defined as a blood pressure between 120 over 80 and 139 over 89, may benefit from lowering of blood pressure with lifestyle modification and possibly medication, especially if there are other risk factors for end organ damage such as diabetes or kidney disease. For some people, blood pressure readings lower than 140 over 90 may be a more appropriate normal cutoff level. For example, in certain situations such as in patients with long duration chronic kidney diseases that spill protein into the urine, the blood pressure is ideally kept at 130 over 80 or even lower. The purpose of reducing the blood pressure to this level in these patients is to slow the progression of kidney damage. Patients with diabetes may also benefit from blood pressure that is maintained at a level lower than 130 over 80. In addition, African Americans who have an increased risk for developing the complications of hypertension may decrease this risk by reducing their systolic blood pressure to less than 135 and their diastolic blood pressure to 80 or less. In line with the thinking that the risk of end organ damage from high blood pressure represents continuum, this type of analysis has led to an ongoing rethinking in regard to who should be treated for hypertension and what the goals of treatment should be.